Hello and welcome to a TTGS shop update via video. Hooray. So it's been a while since I made a video, so I figured I would do that since I had everything in place to do it. So here I am doing it. Um, so yeah, I printed those brackets. You can see them there. They are red. They are very, very sturdy. Um, I would say not ideal, probably long term. I'm surely going to test them out, but um, I don't know uh, how they're going to hold up versus the molded ones. Uh, I mean, they're less likely to crack, but because of how 3D printing works, um, you know, there's so many more little places for things to get weak. So um, I don't know. We'll play it by ear. I still kind of have in my mind to just get some aluminum ones made and call it good, but I have a feeling that's going to be frightfully expensive. Um, and that's for down the road anyway. So um, what I'm doing here is I took the very, very top of the frame off so that I could um, actually remove the brackets. See, so <clears throat> I wanted to keep things as simple as possible. So you can see me here, I'm working the, working the vertical screws uh, so that I can get at all of the things that are holding the gantry to the vertical screws. Um, I, you know, I could have just taken them off at the motor, but I really wanted to just make this as simple as possible with as few uh, parts floating around as I could. So, um, so I left the screws in place and what I'm doing, what I'm doing right now is taking the little set pins off. Uh, I don't know any of this terminology, so you're going to have to bear with me, but here in a sec, you'll see them there. It's a, it's a metal brass piece that, uh, slides on the screw and uh, that's what you hold uh, that's what the brackets hold uh, to guide itself up and down so as the screw turns at the motor the brass piece stays still but it's it's being worked up and down the screw and that drags the gantry along with it up or down um, yeah here I'm about to you're about to see the little spinner dropping down. So that's the brass piece. And you can see that there is zero resistance on that one. The other one, not so much. You can see it kind of, it like kind of meanders its way down slowly. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so <laughs> that actually becomes a pain in the butt later when I'm putting this together, but putting it back together. But, uh, so taking the old brackets out, uh, they were, you know, honestly, all things considered, they were in better shape than I was expecting. Uh, the, the cracks at the, uh, you know, where I showed you on the pictures before, uh, were pretty much the only places that were really, really bad. Um, but I think that's because it's the only place that has any real tension to it. Uh, the way that, it, the way that it, uh, it attaches itself to the gantry, uh, you want it firm, but it doesn't have to be very tight. The part that you need tight is that inward tension along those rails, uh, so that everything stays in place, uh, as the 3d, 3D printer does its thing. So, uh, I'm taking the little nylon wheels off of the old brackets and putting them on to the new ones. Uh, I was very surprised. So the reason why I was apprehensive at the beginning uh, about doing the 3D printed version of these brackets is you don't get 100% accuracy. So, uh, you know, it, it depending on the printer, it can be a very minuscule bit of slop. I don't know what the, uh, what the official term is, but, um, you know, so if you, if you tell the printer to print something that is exactly 22 millimeters by exactly 22 millimeters, you probably aren't going to get that. Uh, it could be a little less on one, on one side than another. It could be a little bit more. Um, but at least it's usually pretty lateral. So for the sake of simplicity, if, if it's all going to be off by a millimeter, you'll have, you'll have, uh, two sides that will be that 22 millimeters or give or take. And then the other two sides will both be, you know, 19.5 or, you know, 20.2 or something like that. Um, pretty consistently across the board. And, 
uh, this is one of those pieces that the tolerances are pretty important. Um, and I was surprised when I assembled these that pretty much everything, you know, like some were tighter than others, but everything was pretty snug and went in very comfortably. And I was very, very, very happy about that. I, uh, uh, cause, yeah, cause like I said, that was my primary worry. So it turned out to not be a worry. <laughs> so yeah, you can see here, that's me putting the, one of the screws in, like I said, some are snugger than others. Uh, and, uh, you know, but like I said, nothing that was going to cause an issue, just, uh, you know, like I said, just though that's, it's those differences in, in the tolerances. So, uh, yeah, I mean, at this point I'm putting the, uh, that second bracket on and, uh, kind of not really doing anything committally because, um, at this point, like all of this stuff needs to be tensioned in place. So, you know, I'm just kind of putting things on and, uh, you know, dealing with them as they come. So now I am putting the gantry back on and, uh, this is that trouble I was telling you about with the, <laughs> with the brass pieces that attach to it. I, uh, uh, it just, yeah, it, like everything was wonky. It, nothing was, you know, not, nothing, there was nothing there to hold anything in place. So, uh, long story short, it was coming to, back together differently than how I took it apart. And so, uh, I had to kind of scramble and hold and things to, uh, make sure that nothing was going to do any permanent damage. So you've seen, you've seen that screw on the opposite side of where I'm standing move quite a bit. Um, fortunately that is nothing to worry about. The, uh, the, the, the little doodad that attaches the screw to the motor is, uh, is flexible. So, uh, so when, when the 3d printer is operating, obviously you don't want that, but in the meantime, it's nice to have that flexibility because, um, you have to center those screws again. Um, yeah, so you can see that it came away quite a bit. Um, <laughs> I, uh, um, yeah, like I said, I just, I, this, this part was, this part was a little more hassle than I was expecting considering how not very tough it was to take apart. And then of course, at this point, I didn't realize it at the time, but I was kind of making a grave mistake because I was trying to do that crosswise tension. And then I finally realized that I had to put the the top beam back on the frame. So all of the things that I did to get things mounted, I had to basically undo because now I had the frame squished together too much. And so, yeah, so I had to <clears throat> finally remember to put this, the, the cross member for the actual frame back on, and then things got much, much easier from there. So that, that's you know, fortunate. I, uh, Yeah, I, I, I'm surprised that it took me as long as it took me to actually figure out, at least I'm 98% sure at this point, what was actually wrong with the 3D printer. So I, you know, uh, I just, I, I, the, my, my very first in instinct told me that it was the extruder being weird because, you know, nothing was rattling, nothing, you know, I wasn't getting any weird noises, that kind of a thing. So, so I went through the whole hot end and did all the extrusion stuff. Um, but it didn't fix anything. So then I figured out that, you know, there, the, the gantry was wobbling. So I tightened everything down. Um, you know, as, as much as I could, uh, you know, just as a general maintenance, cause it's something you need to do semi regular anyway, is just make sure everything's tight. Cause things, you know, jiggle apart because it does a lot of jigga, 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 jigga type motions. So, so I did that, uh, didn't fix anything. <laughs> so then I was finally able to get a good look at it here because I have space to actually look around in good light instead of the closet in my bedroom where it had been. 
and I determined, I, I discovered the cracks in the brackets and that was the problem. However, I didn't know. I knew that it was the problem. I wasn't entirely sure of why it was the problem. So why it was the problem and the reason why the gantry was wobbling, no matter what I did was that inward tension on those, on those nylon wheels. So you can see the one pair right next to me, you know, directly connected to the new bracket. Um, those are what allow the, the gantry to glide because, you know, they're nylon wheels on, uh, on, you know, uh, painted aluminum and stuff. So it like, it, it moves very, very smoothly with as with very little resistance, uh, as the screws turn to move the gantry up and down. So once I figured out that it was actually that tension on the wheels, like they need to be tense, they need to be tense against that rail. And the more tense they are, the less jiggle you get on the gantry, but then there's this fine line you have to walk because if you make it too tight, the gantry doesn't move smoothly and then you get inaccurate uh, movements because the computer tells it to move, you know, to, to tells the, the motor to rotate X amount and that X amount translates to a specific amount of distance as the screw turn, you know, so if it's, it says, you know, uh, do two full rotations and two full rotations is up you know, exactly 0.5 millimeters, um, it, with too much resistance, it will do that two turns, but it's not doing them at the right speed, or maybe it's not, uh, you know, something, something is shifting before things start moving. So you're only getting 0.4 millimeters out of that twist and problems like that can compound and become worse and worse, uh, as more and more instructions get added. So, I have it effectively back together. I needed to get some more set pins for those brass pieces. And that was that screw. I, I held something up. But yeah, so uh, I, I will take the rest of this to the post.